So before we get into the structure of DNA, just want to mention two experiments just to show you some of the history of the work that was put into discovering that DNA was in fact the genetic material of cells. And this first one was done by Frederick Griffith in 1928 and he was interested in looking at two strains of bacteria. One of these was non-virulent, meaning that it was not able to cause death, right, in the mouse. The other, the smooth strain, was virulent, therefore it, it did cause the, the mouse to die. Okay, now these are named the rough strain and the smooth strain simply because of the way that the cells appeared under the microscope. Now, what he did first, he took the deadly smooth strain, the one that was known to cause death to the mice, and he heated them up to high temperatures so that the bacterial cells were then no longer living. He injected these heat-killed bacterial cells into the mouse and saw that they were no longer able to cause disease and death in the mouse. The next step of the process, he took, so these are the heat-killed cells, right? These were, they were virulent, they were able to cause death, but they've been heat-killed, proving they no longer cause death. So we took those and he incubated them along with the, the non-virulent strain. Okay, so the non-virulent meaning this doesn't cause death. He incubated those together, injected the mice to see that in fact that combination was able to kill the mice. Now what does this mean? This means that even though the heat killed cells could no longer function to cause disease, they carried some kind of factor right, which was transferred to other cells, okay. So we call this transformation when bacteria can inherit genetic material from another bacterial cell, okay. So transformation showed that there was a piece, a factor, a piece of something that could be transferred from one cell to the next. Now the next experiment I want us to look at was done several years later in, in 1952 by Hershey and Chase. And let's talk about this for a minute because there's a lot going on in this experiment. So the first thing is I want you to notice that this label right here, T2 phage, that is just a type of a bacteriophage. A bacteriophage is a virus that infects bacterial cells. And E. coli is a bacterial cell. So that's, the E. coli is the host that's being infected by the bacteriophage. Now, what was their question? Their question was, what is the actual inherited generic, genetic material of the cell? What is the, what is the instructions? Is it DNA or is it protein? That was what they were after in this experiment. What they knew was, when a bacteriophage infects a cell, some part of that bacteriophage is getting into the host cell, and that's the genetic material. That's what's telling, ter taking over the host cell's machinery, making new virus particles, being passed on to new viruses, the, the new phages. So they knew that whatever gets into the cell, that's got to be the key, okay? So they were looking to see which one gets in, the DNA or the protein. Now one other thing we need to understand about this is how a centrifuge works and what does that even mean. Okay, if you're growing cells in culture, okay, then you you will sort of have like a uh, liquid suspension, okay. So you've got broth and nutrients that the bacterial cells need to thrive. And the bacterial cells are going to be growing inside of this broth. So you're going to have kind of this cloudy looking broth with the cells growing in it. Now, if you put that through a centrifuge, the centrifuge is going to spin it at high rates of speed so that things are going to move based on their density. Okay? What you'll get is, at the end of the centrifuge process, you'll get a little pellet of the most dense things in that suspension. And then you'll have what's called the supernatant, which is the liquid and the less dense components. When you're growing up cell cultures like this, what you get in your pellet 
are the actual cells. Okay? They're the most dense part. And then what you get in the supernatant is mostly the liquid media, right, that the cells are growing in. So we need to understand that part. Now let's look to see right here in this top half of the experiment what's going on. Well, they took bacteriophage and they labeled the DNA of the bacteriophage radioactively. And what does that mean? That means that they had atoms that were radioactive that were in the DNA molecules of the virus. I mean, it just means that they could see where this ended up, right? It gives them a way to detect it. So they allowed these radioactively labeled phage molecules to do their normal process of infecting E. coli cells. Then they took the cells that had been infected by the phages and they centrifuged them down. Okay, so what they were looking for is to say, did the DNA that we radioactively labeled, did it actually get into the pellet or are we going to find it in the liquid supernatant? So they were looking for, if it's, if it's in the pellet, they knew that the DNA molecule got into the cell and that would be the key molecule. And in fact, that's what they saw. They saw when they radioactively labeled the DNA that the, radio, the radioactive label was down here, okay, in the pellet, meaning the DNA got in. Now, in the next part of the experiment, they went through the same process, but this time the radioactive label was actually put in the proteins of the phage and not in the DNA. Went through the same process, let it infect the cell, spun it down, and what they saw was, in, in the second time around, that the radioactive label was actually found in the supernatant, meaning that protein molecule did not get into the E. coli cells. So that proved that it was the DNA that was the genetic material that was inherited.